welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Daryl Green. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Zoe Lyons and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. <laughs> we start with a round call of This is the Answer, What is the Question? On the board are six categories. Zoe, which category would you like? Um, politics, please. OK, your category is politics. The answer is 50%. What is the question? What is the name of 50 Cent's mathematician brother? <laughs> is it what does Heather Mills save on IMAC? <laughs> what is the most you'll have to pay for a sofa at DFS? <laughs> what is a bad answer to the phrase, how much do you love me? <laughs> is it the, uh, the percentage of ant and deck that is forehead? <laughs> is it... You're a 19-year-old Glaswegian <laughs> male. How much of your life is left? <laughs> <laughs> is it if I entered an orgy covered in Marmite, what would be my success rate? <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I, would I always, look, I always find like, that when people say, oh, I'm a Marmite kind of person, people either love me or hate me, they're always people that everybody hates. <laughs> <laughs> is it how much of Silvio Berlusconi is made of oil? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what percentage of the population, rather than a TV debate, would like to see Cameron and Brown have a cage fight? <laughs> I would love to see that. So would I. Yeah. Who would win that? I would imagine Brown. Yeah, Brown He's got moves. Brown. He's also got that dislocatable jaw. Yeah, he can he actually swallow yeah. your whole. He could swallow you. He can actually yeah. take your jaw down. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Wouldn't well, that be incredible? <laughs> if Just Cameron ran towards you. Yeah. Cameron's <laughs> legs. <It's flapping>. <laughs> <laughs> Is it what was the proportion of cats <laughs> that died during the making of my ill-fated television pilot, Cat vs Bleach. <laughs> sure, it'll be a hundred percent. Surely. <laughs> do we have an answer that we can do? Uh, I think it's um, what percentage of the top jobs in the Labour Party does Harriet Harman think should be filled by women? Yeah, absolutely right. Very good. Well done, Hugh. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yes, the question I was looking for was, according to Harriet Harman, what proportion of the top two posts in the Labour Party should be allocated to Harriet Harman? Or, more generally, <laughs> women. <laughs> this is the news. The deputy leader of the Labour Party, Harriet Harman, said that either her post or the job of leader should always be occupied by a woman because, in her words, men cannot be left to run things on their own. <laughs> her actual oh, words. Listen, right? she's deputy... Did you hear that bingo wings in the corner? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, there is something about representation of women at the high levels of government, but that actual quote does make it seem like every time she left the room, yeah. it would turn into a chimp <laughs> tea party. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <no. laughs> and she'd come back in and go, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's true, though, isn't it, that women, women are underrepresented in the top yes, echelons they are. of, of politics, aren't they? In Italy, for example, there are lots of women <laughs> in the top jobs. You can be... Berlusconi will put you in the cabinet in Italy at the age of 19. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good enough. So you can see where it's coming from. Right? Harriet Harman's an incredible figure, isn't she? Do you know that Harriet Harman, when she first came to my attention, she wrote a yeah. book about the history of feminism, which she dedicated to her husband. <laughs> she, she's mistaking sexism with people hating her. <laughs> she's always saying stupid things, isn't she? She said... He said she is Radio 2 to Gordon Brown's Radio 4. And you're thinking, well, she's not Radio 2. Radio 2 is the most popular radio station in this country. If she's anything, she's Isle of Wight FM. <laughs> <laughs> On a Sunday morning at <clears throat> 3 o'clock in January when the transmission mast is broken. <laughs> Yeah. Some, some, some we're watching is there is the guy who does the three o'clock in the morning <laughs> slot. <laughs> Why am I the shorthand for <laughs> crap? <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if he looks exactly like Harriet Harman as well? <laughs> <laughs> this is I know that female politicians always have an element of freakishness, don't they? She's a bit of a freak. Hazel Blears looks like Gianfranco Zola humped in Oompa Loompa. <laughs> Looks like a face trapped in a haunted mirror. <laughs> As opposed to Alistair Darwin. Yeah. Right, so a 
former winner of Miss Teen USA. Yeah. And, and John Prescott. Why are we led by the least among us? <laughs> is they the only ones who are fool enough to do it? Maybe one of the qualifications to become an MP is you have to be born inside out. That's one of the things. <laughs> you can quite clearly sustain your organs on the outside. Come on in. <laughs> the thing about Harriet Harman as well is that um, she's wonderfully dappy. I don't know if you knew this, but her blog was recently broken into and they said she defected to the Tories. And do you know how they found out? Do you know what her password was? Harriet Harman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They said that if the, if the Lehman brothers had actually been the Lehman sisters, that the banking crisis wouldn't have been as bad oh. as it was. I think that's utter rubbish. Yeah, yeah, I'm absolutely. sorry. I right. think if there were girls in charge of the Lehmans, they'd just gone, sod it, we just spend it on shoes. Yeah, Come yeah. on! Oh, exactly. Billion exactly. on Jimmy Choo. It, it, it is a ridiculous argument, the, the Lehman brothers, Lehman sisters. I mean, you could just choose any pun at that stage. Yeah, well, if the Lehman brothers were the Gaiman brothers, <laughs> uh, then <laughs> the Gaiman yeah, should have done much better. You could, better, say, yeah. that in, you could say that in tennis. You could go, well, if the Williams sisters were... Oh, that's a bad example. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, it just comes down to the fact that they're saying women are better with money. That's what she's saying, which is simply not true. No man bought Mamma Mia. There isn't a man that's listened to Duffy. Everywhere you go, <laughs> I'm begging you for money. No man went, Duffy, please. I love this stuff. It really sings to me. It isn't a man. This is a direct pop at my girlfriend. He spent 30 quid on a doorstop that's a hedgehog. <laughs> to be able to come on a TV show, though, and have a go at your girlfriend, isn't it? <laughs> Just don't get in the door, stop! Yeah. <laughs> I think if women, if women are genuinely better with money, I think we should put Kerry Katona in charge of Barclays and see what happens. <laughs> I think we all know what Harriet needs. <laughs> Our support, cos she's right. <laughs> Bankers are sexist and bankers are laddish, but that isn't the reason that the banks collapsed. It's not like people were going there, what did the derivatives close out? I don't know, I was giving Jason a wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> I think if it's got to be a man and a woman that's in charge, let's have Richard and Judy. <laughs> Judy can recommend a few books while we wait for the bombs to arrive from all the countries that Richard has offended. <laughs> There is an argument, has to be said, that she, a point made, that a female leader would mm. a Labour be more electable under a female leader, and she's right, it would be more electable under a female... It would be electable under anyone, frankly, if they yeah. elected a hat stand or a jar of hummus <laughs> to run the... If they elected... If the Labour Party chose the H1N1 virus to lead it into the next election, <laughs> it would do better than they will under Gordon Brown. <laughs> Why has Lord Mandelson been in the news this week? He's building a Death Star. That's... <laughs> The there he is. <laughs> dun, 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 it's been dun, suggested dun, dun. that he should take over as Labour leader because just there's not enough evil. <laughs> not enough evil. We need a vampire at the helm <laughs> just projecting pure evil from his eyes in bolts. <laughs> he always comes back. He comes back stronger. He's like Thrush or something. <laughs> now he's a lord. Who made him a lord? The Sith? <laughs> Not a good photograph yeah. of someone who looks slightly <laughs> scary at the best of times. Feel free at home to draw a tiny moustache under his nose just to get the full effect of that, of that photograph. He's, got he's, he's so reptilian. When that woman threw, threw green slime in his face, I thought he was bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> he's not actually going to prosecute the woman who threw green crust at him. And do you know the reason that he's not going to prosecute her? Loves it's custard. No. <laughs> the reason is that apparently, right, Ruth Kelly, she got egged, she decided to prosecute the person who egged her, went along to court, and on her way to court to prosecute, she got egged again. <laughs> <laughs> he was MP for Hartlepool. Yeah, yeah. How did that work? He was MP for Hartlepool for 12 years, a Europhilic homosexual. <laughs> it's like John Barrowman being president of Afghanistan. <laughs> I like to think that he would have formed a sort of odd couple friendship with the leader of the local <laughs> Labour Council. Peter, you teach me how to appreciate Don Giovanni. I'll show you how to fight a dog. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Frankie Hugh and Stewart. <laughs> Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask Hugh to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features the royal family. Oh, well, Mother, another day, another state occasion. Must be very tiring. Do you ever feel like hanging up the old boots and handing over to someone younger? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Charles. William isn't ready yet. <laughs> Which way do we go? Oh, just go to the right. A bit more to the right. That's it. To the right. Go to the right. Oh, bollocks, he's missed it. 
<laughs> really worth digging the hole. Can I get you some food, Mother? What would you like? Pufferfish, strychnine, deadly nightshade. They do some lovely sushi here. I think I've got some uh, polonium in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Look, do give it a rest, Charles. You've got to get it into your head. My reign so far has been that long, but it will be that long. <laughs> that long. That long. I hope I make myself clear that long. This long, that long. Do you see? I don't know why the bloke was so upset. I just asked him if he was a cannibal. <laughs> now we play a round called Mock the Nine O'Clock News. This game involves <laughs> Zoe, Stuart, Andy and Russell. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and then you can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winners are the people I judge to produce the funniest stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is finance. Can I have a volunteer to talk about that? Andy. <laughs> British Airways, their answer to the credit crunch. They've asked their employees, can you come into work for nothing for a month or take a month off unpaid? <laughs> There's a tricky choice, isn't there? <laughs> and who is going to want to fly British Airways? The last thing you want to hear when you get on the plane, this is your captain speaking. I'm not being paid today. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I am looking forward to seeing the credit crunch version of Monopoly. You know, instead of getting £1,500 from the bank, you have to lend the bank £1,500. <laughs> and then everybody keeps on going round the board with nobody buying any property whatsoever. <laughs> because they always think it's going to be cheaper next time they go around. <laughs> well done, Andy. OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is Sarah Palin. Who wants to talk about that? Ah, Sarah Palin. <laughs> she, uh, she was uh, apparently an ex-beauty queen of a town in Alaska called Wasilla. And uh, the press were very keen on this. They kept saying, you know, the beauty queen Sarah Palin, the ex-beauty queen, the beauty queen Sarah Palin. Let me tell you something, people. Wasilla is a very, very small town. <laughs> Population eight, possibly 9,000 people at the best of times. To call it a one-horse town is to over-exaggerate the number of horses in that town by <laughs> one. They timeshare a horse with another shithole down the road. <laughs> now, my brother used to live in Anchorage, Alaska, and I have been to Wasilla, and in the five minutes it took us to drive across Wasilla, I was voted beauty queen <laughs> of Wasilla. It was no big deal, honestly. An otter and a caribou came second and third, respectively. <laughs> I can show it. That leaves us with Stuart and Russell. Let's spin the wheel again. The next topic is men's health. Who wants to come in on that? <laughs> Russell. I went to the doctors recently uh, with anal issues. Um, <laughs> I thought I had cancer, not I can't put my CDs in order. But <laughs> it's a terrifying moment, right? <laughs> so scary, cos in your head, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. And I went there and I took down my trousers. Obviously, we had a chat first and it just... <laughs> I'm not very well. <laughs> you can see that, mate, this is a chip shop. <laughs> You've never done it slower in your life for just peeling them down. I got them down to about there, just heard his booming voice go, in the other room. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have a decision to make there. Do you pull them up or do you waddle with pride, right? <laughs> you waddle, that's what you do. When you waddle, you can't help but giggle. The last thing you need <laughs> is to be giggling is before a man's going to pop his finger in your Richard because now <laughs> you're a wiggling target, right? <laughs> I'll be honest, when the finger goes in, you're not laughing anymore! <laughs> You're like a red arrow! And that's the moment they chat. How you doing? Fine. <laughs> you draw the curtains, we've gathered quite a crowd. <laughs> Look at that, it's Atrium Steps and he's getting violated. I'm Russell! <laughs> OK, Stuart, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is school. <laughs> You, uh, you're looking at a very proud Canadian who is very proud of the education system in Canada. <laughs> no, I was horrible in school. I failed math so many times I can't even count. <laughs> I preferred French over chemistry because the chemistry teacher and I just didn't have any, um... <laughs> rapport. 
One teacher said I'd be a better student if I spent less time flirting. I immediately jumped off his lap. <laughs> One teacher used to always say I wasn't very observant, but you know what? That was his or her opinion. <laughs> I was going to join the debating team, but someone talked me out of it. <laughs> In high school, I was voted most likely to reminisce. <laughs> okay, at the end of that round, the points go to Zoe and Stewart. Our next round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. But what does ACIP stand for? Is it Abdul's Carpets Irresistible Prices? <laughs> is it another celebrity introduces perfume? <laughs> <laughs> what, what would be... It, 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 sorry, stench uh, of desert? Stench of atomic cloud. <laughs> <laughs> has, he forgotten, has he forgotten that he comes from a, an Islamic country and he's going, Happy Christmas, I'm pissed. <laughs> Is it a Colombo impersonator performs? <laughs> uh, uh, am, I, am, I, am I torturing you? I'm sorry. Am I torturing you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, this is just going to take five fingers. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mrs. Colombo loved your bombing. <laughs> is, Mrs. Colombo actually voted for you. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it aliens sorry. capture Iranian president and he's there going, phone home? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. The A doesn't stand for Ahmadinejad. Alan Carr is priceless. <laughs> Nor does it stand for Alan. It stands for Ayatollah. Ayatollah. Aladdin. Yeah. Ayatollah confirms Iranian <laughs> president. Very good. Well done, Hugh. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, the answer I was looking for was Ayatollah confirms Iranian president. This is a story that Ayatollah Khamenei has finally declared Mahmoud Ahmadinejad the winner of June's Iranian presidential elections, despite ongoing protests. But what was incredible about it, so um, basically they were accused of stealing the election and then people protested, and then Ahmadinejad said, you know who's to blame, don't you? Britain. And we all went, eh? <laughs> we're watching Wimbledon, mate. <laughs> we're watching a hairy Scottish man do very well. <laughs> Savvy was his opponent, wasn't it? And after the election, he had his supporters come out and, and marched, and uh, then Ahmadinejad's supporters came out and did a counter march, and then there was another march, and it was, it was basically if only we had some way of telling who had the most supporters, like maybe some sort of election or something. <laughs> Don't we need to get perspective here? Okay, they arrest protesters. We arrested protesters after G20. Yeah. They killed a protester. We killed a guy who wasn't even protesting. <laughs> We've got Sharia law that isn't very nice to women. We've got Jude law. <laughs> <laughs> how did you become? How did you come to the attention of a, a lot of people over here? Twitter. Twitter. They use Twitter. We use Twitter. It was a beautiful. Facebook. It was a beautiful yeah. story about that when uh, Armadina. Uh, when Armadina. <laughs> it's not a name that you can't pronounce, but it's a name that you have to think about just before you pronounce. Yeah. He probably thinks that everybody's just incredibly dramatic. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> President. I'm a dinner jazz. <laughs> what is, why is everybody so so arch in Iran? I don't know, President. Well, it's funny, but I'm a dinner jazz. <laughs> What was amazing about the Twitter story yeah. was that um, because they're so scared of protesting that the way they were going to protest when Ahmadinejad was going to be on TV, they were going to put on every household appliance so that they could try and cause a blackout to get him off telly. Isn't that beautiful? He's on, put on the kettle, <laughs> plug in the hoover. <laughs> you're, you're, going, you're there sat there with your tetleys going, I'm part of a revolution. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so was, all Twitter was all obviously on one side until Ahmadinejad himself went on Twitter uh, and he tweeted, hey, everybody, some crazy stories about the election. Basavi got pwned. Mega lols. Uh, and... <laughs> and all these about, like, this is the endorsement. For God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this is a sense of scale. This is a country that, A, aspires towards nuclear weaponry. This is their presidential endorsement. That's a raffle at a school hall, right? <laughs> I actually, I actually played that club, and uh, it's very distracting with those three guys behind <laughs> me. He also doesn't seem to have any feet. Where have his feet gone? <laughs> hey, another news, what is this? That's a oh, chart. The, the... It, it's a chart, <laughs> yes, a chart of what? This is a new point system that immigrants must adhere to if they want to live in this country. Yes, you get bonus points if you've got English, and you lose points 
if you fail to integrate, which seems harsh in the initial interview. Uh, you don't turn up dressed as a pearly queen. Oh, oi, oi! Good integrating, well done. Uh, it's it's basically racist, isn't it? What, people are going to have to learn English to get a British passport. No, I'm afraid it's my family and I will be murdered if we go home. <laughs> Not my family and me. Back to the Sudan with you. I want them to learn British history, but essentially British history is us invading their country, <laughs> enslaving their people, and then nicking their natural resources. Always good to remind them of that before we welcome them into the country. <laughs> but it's Nobody bigger. says this, right? If you're seeking asylum in this country, you probably need asylum. Right? If you come from a sunny country and you want to move to Birmingham, <laughs> someone in your homeland is trying to murder you. <laughs> if you're rocking up to Preston looking for a better life, things have gone very badly wrong <laughs> where you come from. Let those people in. Don't say to those people, hey, you're a heart surgeon in your homeland, but you read very badly from Beowulf. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to let you go. <laughs> it's really unfair, though, isn't it? Because it, it always comes down, they, should, they have to know things about Winston Churchill. You ask anyone in this country, give us a famous quote from Churchill, and I guarantee they'll go, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has any, you know, because this, this, this is to the points to get yourself into the country. Currently, there is a Life in the UK test uh, which features uh, questions like this. After the Second World War, where did British textile and engineering firms send agents to find workers? <laughs> Now, judging by the reaction of the audience here and six <laughs> blank faces yeah, here... Nobody knows and and even, even more weirdly, well, there's it? another question from the life skills test. Where does Santa Claus come from? <laughs> now, there's debate in this country about that particular issue. Oh, Let alone, there is no hard and fast answer to that one, but that is, that is among them. Why don't you just... If you really want people to mix in, just give them a simple finish the sentence question with questions like, the referees are... What? <laughs> <laughs> And if they can finish that, like, the uh, yeah. Frosty's there. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why don't we just go the whole hog, admit we're racist, and at Immigration Control have a Dulux wall chart, <laughs> and when people rock up, we go, uh, burnt umber, I'm afraid not. <laughs> <laughs> Autumn sunset, in you come, just. <laughs> By the way, this announcement of this new clampdown on, on immigration, oh. what made it slightly awkward? It was a fantastic story because there was an illegal immigrant found hiding underneath a bus that was full of people who worked for immigration. Yes, it was. <laughs> Isn't that it a brilliant a story? It was a bus carrying staff of the UK Border Agency and an illegal immigrant clambered underneath it and hid beside the fuel it's tank. It's the last place they'll look. It is. It clearly <laughs> was the last place. Just for cheekiness, he should be allowed in because that is brilliant. That, yeah. is, what, that is like a mouse sneaking into the house by holding onto the cat's nipples, isn't it? <laughs> it's just... Well, apparently, when they got to Folkestone, he just legged it. I'd have loved to have been on that bus and seen those guys go, well, I, th I think that went quite well, don't you? I think it went quite well. <laughs> oh, dear, who's that chap? <laughs> I don't want to sound racist, but there's no way that any of us are going to catch him over <laughs> 5,000 metres. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Frankie Hugh and Stewart. <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way to the performance area, please. I caught ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. <laughs> OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely lines from a thriller. Michael, Peter, David, Vladimir, I think we may have a spy in the organisation. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the Pentagon, then the triangle, and then the square. Ah, <laughs> oh, pussy galore, Bond here. I've been told by my doctor that I need to contact all previous partners. <laughs> The owner of this motel dresses up as his mother and stabs people. But the guidebook says it's still better than the Ibis. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to go to Warsaw, meet a man called Borislav. You'll then ask him why he didn't fix my plumbing before he left for home. <laughs> Miss Scarlet looked at him through the window. He had one massive testicle like a space hopper. <laughs> that was why they called him Professor Plum. This is no ordinary pen, Bond. Turn it upside down, the woman's <laughs> clothes drop off and you can see it. 
Red or green, red or green, which do I cut? Come on, they're only peppers. How long is this salad going to take? <laughs> We need to find the third man. There's no way Amanda Holden will shag just two of us. <laughs> Here's... Simon. <laughs> the Orient Express has been cancelled. However, there was a murder on the temporary Orient replacement <laughs> bus. <laughs> I have amnesia. The tattoos on my body will tell me what happened. Dara was here. <laughs> I'd been a serial killer for four years, but they'd never given me a nickname. Then, you bite one guy in the ass, <laughs> and suddenly you're the butt muncher. Ah, <laughs> oh, the butt muncher's got me! The butt muncher's got me! <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Bad things to say at a wedding. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, the vowels are simple. Just repeat after me. Eeny, meeny, macaraca, rare ride, dominaca, chicka, bocca, lollipop, rom, pom, push. <laughs> and we will now sing hymn number 225. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> when John went down on one knee, I wish I'd known that he was having a stroke. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd like to thank Elsie for the flowers. It was her funeral I nicked them from. <laughs> so what, your best man's in an absolute state. That's my mum. <laughs> now, it's my job to tell some amusing stories about <laughs> Gavin. So, first of all, for a kick-off, he's a hermaphrodite. <laughs> my bride always wears white. Isn't that right, Dolly? Bear! <laughs> hey, Carol's family have always had their doubts about me. So, first of all, let me explain why I'm naked. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first gay wedding, so you must be the pretty one. <laughs> to my new son-in-law, I would say this. You have released me this monster is yours now. <laughs> I would like to apologise for the state of my clothes and the smell of sick only I spent last night in a skip. <laughs> anyway, dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. People have said to me, why have you stopped being a bachelor after so long? And I say, well, look at her. <laughs> she's wealthy and she's dying. <laughs> it wouldn't be a traditional Norfolk wedding without a speech from the father of the bride and groom. <laughs> <laughs> the end of that round, the points go to Frankie Hewitt Stewart. <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyd, Hugh Dennis, and Stuart Francis. Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Zoe Lyons and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. The weird acts, the deluded wannabes and the judges you just love to hate. Why do we go and put stars in their eyes? It's the funny side of talent shows on BBC Two next. <laughs> <laughs>